you know who you can talk to crazy and who you can't talk to crazy. You must be out of your goddamn mind. What? <laughs> Y'all get on my nerves. I got all this booty. You know it's hard for me to get. Welcome to the JNO show. Where we talk about things that we were never told on J. And I'm O. And now you know. What hey. up, guys? How y'all doing? Welcome back. Yes. I was about to say she was. <laughs> anyway. um, okay, guys. So today we're going. Wait a minute. To... When did Spirit Fingers? Oh. See? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Just, you know, it could be either <laughs> or. You never know. Never know. Oh, this we wanted to do because we're hearing a lot of the opposite these days. And I figured it'd be a good thing to throw this out there in the mix. Mm -hmm. So that way we can hear and see that not everybody thinks this way. Right. Woman says, I like the way black men treat me. No more wasting time. She's back. Let's get it. So anytime I talk about me and treat me well, I get a lot of pushback. But in this comment, one thing you said that is true is men know who they can and can't play with. They know how to handle different women. I'm going to give you a perfect example. One day I was going to the gas station, right? And I was mm -hmm. in my car and I was fumbling around with some stuff. And I was about to get out the car. Now, before I got out the car, I had already spotted a pookie standing near <laughs> the door of the gas station. They love those gas stations, man. <laughs> Spotted a pookie. That's hilarious. And there was a girl who got, got out of her car. She was a pookisha. She had a little booty shorts on, like, you know, whatever. Sexy red. And she proceeds to go into the gas station and he hit her with a A, A, A. She ignored him. He yelled out some profanities to her. And as he's yelling out these profanities to her, I'm getting out the car and I'm walking towards the door. Soon as I get to the door, he say, hey, miss, how you doing today? I say, I'm good, thank you. Let me get that door for you. And he holds the door for me and lets me in, right? He don't try to holler me or nothing, but he just opens the door and let me in. When I leave out, all right, miss, you have yourself a good day. You too. Like his interaction with me and his interaction with that girl, completely different, completely different. You know why? As soon as I got out the car, he already spotted and knew. You're not gonna you're not gonna talk to me like that, right? I didn't come dressed like you should talk to me like that. I'm not presenting myself like you should talk to me. My demeanor, nothing about me says yell at me. Cat call me. I'm a grown woman. I present myself like a grown woman. I carry myself like a grown woman. Men treat me like a grown woman, right? I don't care what y'all choose to wear and what you choose to do, but what you ain't gonna do is argue me about the difference in how we get treated, right? Because you want to make it like it's this one size fits all. Like we all get this universal treatment from men and we don't. They do not disrespect me when they see me. They are very respectful. Holding doors. Hey, miss. How are like Very respectful. They do not get out of line with me. But they do got to get out of line with a lot of y'all. Right? You can try to figure out whatever you want as to why this is the case. But I'm going to tell you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I like how I get treated by men. Black men. So I'm going to continue to keep carrying myself the way I do and act the way I do because I like the treatment that I get. So you can take that to the bank, see if you can cash it, but you can continue to proceed to act the way you act, wear what you want to wear, and however you get treated, you're going to continue to get treated that way. I love that for you. Ah! Mm. She said, I love that for you. Oh, <laughs> ah. oh. so as a... <laughs> As a fellow lady, I feel like you should weigh on it before I say anything. Yep. No, I mean, bars. That's cool, bars! Bruh. All facts. It's facts! These are not facts. These facts are not facts. Bruh. It's so true. Like, I've had that experience happen to me many a times where, like, I'm especially back home in the tri-state. Just in case y'all ain't know, we from Jersey, so. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it, it moved, we move different up there. You know? Yeah, so. <laughs> it is what it is. Definitely true. Like, you know what's funny though? We're speaking specifically about men, but I feel as though this can be applied across the board. Yep. You know who you can talk to crazy and who you can't talk to crazy. You must be out of your goddamn mind. What? <laughs> that is across the board. That's men and women, yep. you know, because people, they carry themselves a certain way. Bruh. They have a certain demeanor. Sometimes they might have an arresting 
face, ah! all right, where you fill in the blank, where you know, like, nah, that's not the one I want to mess with. Yep. It's a certain aura, a certain vibe, whatever you want to call it. You know who you can and can't talk to a certain way. Yes, There's sir. so many sayings out there. Mm-hmm. I don't know that this would apply, but kind of like mm-hmm. you catch more bees with honey. Mm-hmm. Same instance is like if you dress a certain way, you're going to attract a certain type of attention. Yes. If you want someone of a certain caliber or a certain quality, then you may want to make sure that they're observing something that's quality. Ooh. If they are looking at you and you're dressed with like poom poom shorts Ooh. and you got on barely nothing, you showing everything to everybody, <laughs> then they're not really viewing you as quality. No, that may not be fair because they don't know who you are on the inside as a person. Come on, but now, dog. let's be real. When you see people, you judge them yep. based on how they look. So my eyes are correct. If you present as though you were 304, Bruh. that's that's how you're gonna get treated. Yep. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. is. All right, I'm sorry to inform all of you today. <laughs> Pastor Jermaine really? has been watching some of you <laughs> as you come to and fro. Okay. And it reminds him. Really? Yeah, third person. <laughs> it reminds him of how he used to be uh-huh. Back in the day. Now, see, when I grew up, I used to listen to Woo oh, of the Tang. <laughs> I used to listen to Mob. They were deep. <laughs> I used to listen to The Rock with the fellas. <laughs> and I dressed and carried myself according because I lived in an area where your greatest chance of being left alone was to participate in the culture mm. well. that was in those neighborhoods. Now, mm-hmm. for some of you who know a little bit about Brick. Bruh. Really? Bruh. Interrupting my sermon. Ah! Some of y'all know y'all need to turn your phones off. <laughs> When you come into the Congress, some of y'all be sitting in church with your phones on, Bruh. going on, y'all gonna excuse yourself. You know what a pastor be, you need to hear what he's saying. <laughs> That's what's wrong with y'all now, anyway. Uh-uh. So, I used to participate in the culture. I dressed a lot like this. So, as I grew older, became a man, understood the way things worked, I began to dress differently especially in like 2016. Yeah, so it was around that time, 2015, 2014, I started to dress different. Mm -hmm. It became very popular for people to wear suits. Y'all remember that? I used to wear a suit to the mall, Mm -hmm. suit to go to the city, (laughs) suit to play basketball. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) And I saw the difference in how people treated me. Whatever you like. If I walked around looking like I never looked like a real thug. Ah! These these right here just took all of that away. It just didn't happen. But you could tell what I was into based yeah. on how I dressed, mm-hmm. how I carried myself, how my car looked, the music I blasted, the scowl on my face. Bruh. They knew I wasn't some tough guy. I wasn't the neighborhood bully. Right. But he looked crazy as hell. That was enough. Kept me out of trouble. Yep. But as I got older and I began to wear suits, dress up a certain way, walk with my, you know, with your chesticles out. With my chesticles out, shout out to Kai. <laughs> With my chesticles out. People treated me differently. That was as a man. Mm-hmm. As a man, young man becoming a real man, trying to understand the way the world works. Mm-hmm. Here's one thing that has to be impressed upon men and women. The way you dress, carry yourself, the way you speak, the way you walk, your posture will determine how people take you, how they treat you. Yep. And it doesn't matter. Shoulda, woulda, couldas. Don't mean a thing. It doesn't matter what you think. We all use things to judge and categorize the world so that we know how to move in it. Everything from our language to the clothes that are sold to us, the cars we drive, the houses we live in, all of them are languages to our mind to understand how to move in each situation. That doesn't change because you're a woman. It doesn't change because you're a man. He ain't lying.
You can complain about the dress code all you want and talk about how unfair it is, but guess what? Men have to live by the dress code too. That's right. If I work in white collar corporate America, I can't go to work no matter how much I want to in some sweats. Ah. I can't wear them gym tights that I was getting my squats in. I've been squatting for three years trying to get that squat up. <laughs> I finally could squat 315 for three. I'm getting strong. I can't go there with some shorts on so I can show the teardrop on my quads. Ah. I can't do it. Everybody has to listen. The big difference is, first of all, men ain't got no options. Don't. Ladies, I'll be watching what some of y'all be looking at, some of the things y'all can wear. Y'all have so many more options. I understand why it's frustrating. It's frustrating for a brother living where I live because I got a closet full of stuff I can't wear nowhere. Don't. Because there ain't nowhere to go around here that makes sense for me to wear that. They just don't. So I understand the frustration. You go into work, I got all this nice stuff in my class and I can't wear it. All I'm wearing is khakis and pants suits and stuff. I'm getting sick of it. Bruh. You with your polo and your t your khaki pant outfit and I gotta have all this, it gotta be a certain color. Y'all get on my nerves. I got all this booty. You know it's hard for me to get. Well, guess what? You can do that if you want to. People are gonna judge you. Yeah. Not just the men. Men are gonna look. Yep. Women are gonna judge who you are. Yep. You can do what you want. Whatever you like. You can carry yourself how you want. You can talk how you want to. Mm. And in my generation, you talk white. Bruh. That was a thing. That was a thing. Uh -huh. You talk white. I didn't get a lot of that. I was able to be a chameleon and go back and forth. I had an education, so I used it when I needed to use it. Yep. But one thing you cannot do is get the world to change their perception of you based on the decisions that you make mm. and how you carry yourself and that's not going to change he ain't lying that's right you have to at some point come to the thought of what do i want what do i have to do to get it and am i willing to do what i have to do to get it yep. and if you can't get it because you refuse to make the sacrifice mm -hmm. that's on you and nobody else it's facts. It's facts. That's everything from the job you want to the person you want to date. And she is absolutely right. There are women out there who don't know what it's like to get disrespected by a dude or get talked to a certain way because they carry themselves in a way where men know that that's not going to get her anyway. If you carry yourself a certain way, and I don't care if you guys think it's Eurocentric or whatever, you know, whatever thing that you're dealing with, you have to make the decisions based on what you want ultimately in your life. You have to have the foresight and the understanding of what you want your life to look like and to act accordingly because the world is not going to change for any of us you know if a whole bunch of us come together yes but i'm gonna be honest with you as somebody getting into the mindset of being a business owner you think my dad cared what anybody personally felt about what had to be done for him to get his situation taken care of with his business hell no no you come and you do what you gotta do if you work for me and if you don't you won't get fired. And trust me, I saw him fire a lot of people. Yes! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he fired a lot of people because they didn't want to do what needed to be done. Yep. And it doesn't matter if it's how they dress or how they speak, man. Y'all got to have some foresight, bro. And and this whole like selling out thing, like we have so much, so many things in our culture that are mm -hmm. messing up. That's a whole Us story. getting anywhere. Like it's just crazy. And a lot of us fall into that trap. And women are no different than men. We all fall into the same trap, y'all. We gotta, we gotta walk away from that. Yes. So I'm done. That was my rant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I don't understand how people is arguing with her about her experience. I don't know because people just feel as though just because they experience certain things, they feel as though everybody experiences you really the same don't. thing. Yes, that's not the case. I mean, really different don't. people experience different things, and yep. we have to wake up and understand that. Especially if you're in a certain area and you're not well traveled or you don't study about other cultures mm -hmm. and things of that nature like the life that you live is a very small percentage of the rest of the world yep. like we're talking about the world <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know and even from when you go state to state there's differences in how people interact you know different types of cultures and different things of that nature so oh just to give you our perspective y'all know these numbers but did you ever really think about it in the united states there's approximately what 350 million people Mm -hmm. in the United States. Right. In the world, there's seven billion. So when you do the math, real quick, <laughs> quick maths, quick maths, <laughs> quick maths, quick maths, quick maths. <laughs> in the United States, as a whole, 
we encompass approximately 5% of the world population. Damn. Think about it from that perspective. We are approximately 5% of the world population. And it's a little crazy for us to think that the way that we live life is the way the world is supposed to be. That's backwards, but you know, you keep doing you, but I'm saying at some point, if you want to get anywhere, you need to become results oriented. And if you see that what you're doing isn't getting you the result you want, then you need to change your actions. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. And that's for everybody. Yeah. Yes. All right. That's all, all I have to say about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So I'm about to go lay down. I'm not feeling great, y'all. So love y'all. And I hope that what it, we said is actually gonna help you guys in the future with the things that you're trying to accomplish in your lives. Yes. All right. And in the present. Love, peace, and soul, y'all. Just let your soul go. Just let it shine through. Press the off button. <laughs>